In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this futuristic sci-fi looping animation using geometry nodes in Blender EV. So that is what we're creating in this tutorial. So I'm going to show you the complete process of how to create this animation right here. And everything is going to be completely procedural, so you don't need to download any external textures or anything like that. So this environment in the background is going to be procedural, and we're also going to be using geometry nodes for all of the geometry. So this entire thing right here, this is actually just one object. And then over here in the geometry nodes editor, here is the geometry node setup. Now it might look a little bit big and it might look a little bit complex, but but we will be breaking it all down and it's actually not that complicated. It's just a bunch of little pieces all put together. And we're going to be rendering this in Blender EV so it will be real time as well. Now if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my patrons over on my Patreon page will have access to the tutorial files as well. So if you'd like to help support me and this channel then checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are really great ways to help support the channel. And as well as getting these tutorial files on my Gumroad and Patreon, you can also get procedural materials and 3D models and assets and all of my tutorial files. And another great way to help support the channel is by checking out the YouTube memberships. So if you click on that join button right down there next to the subscribe button, if you join my memberships, you'll get some cool perks on YouTube and you'll be helping to support the channel each month. And then just one more thing before we get started, I want to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so just open up a new scene in Blender and let's get started. So if you wanna see my screencast keys, they're gonna be right down there in the corner. You can see what buttons I'm pressing. So we are gonna be doing this in Blender EV, so you can just go right over here to the render properties and just make sure the render engine is set to Blender EV. And then also I wanna change the color management. So if you scroll down here, you can open up the color management tab right here. And on the view transform, I'm gonna set this to filmic. And then on the look here, I just wanna change this to medium high contrast and that'll kind of pop out the colors and make it look a bit more saturated and a bit more contrasty. All right so I'm going to double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected and I will press X and we are going to delete it. So let's press shift A now and shift A is going to bring up the add menu and I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to add a new cube. Now I like to save my Blender files early on just in case it crashes so that we won't lose anything. So let's click on file and then I'm going to click on save as. And I'm just going to save this as looping tutorial.blend and I'll just click on save as. So now as you're working on the project you can just press control s and that will save the Blender file. Now during the tutorial I will be using the node wrangler add-on to preview different nodes so it's really easy to enable the add-on if you don't have it enabled yet. So just click on edit and then you're going to open up the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons tab, you can go up here to the search and you can start to type in node. And then right here you can see there is the node wrangler add-on, so you can just click on that to enable it. And this add-on is really useful for all types of nodes, so we will be using it with the geometry nodes, the shader nodes, and also the world nodes. And then if you want to save the preferences, you can click on that save preferences button, and then that way the node wrangler will always be turned on in your future projects and you can use it in other Blender projects. All right, and then we can just close the user preferences. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, all of the geometry will be created with geometry nodes. So I want to split the window and create a geometry nodes editor. So what I'm gonna do is click right here when the crosshair appears right there, and I'm gonna click and drag out just to split the window. And let's also make this a bit smaller. And also I don't really need this collection right here. So I'm just gonna click right here when the crosshair appears and drag up and then let go to close that. So then right over here, you can click on this and I wanna go right down here and change it to the geometry node editor and then I can also press the N key to close that panel right there so now we're going to click on new and that is going to add geometry nodes to this cube here and we don't actually need any of the cube geometry so if you want to you can press tab to go into edit mode so press tab in the 3d space that'll take you to the edit mode and then just double tap the a key to make sure everything is selected and you can press X to delete and we can delete all the vertices and then I can just tab to go back into object mode but we 
will also just be taking this group input here and I'm going to press X to delete it and that'll also remove any geometry from the view. All right, so now we need some geometry to work with. So in the geometry nodes editor, I'm going to press shift A and then after I press shift A, I'm just gonna hit S and that will take me to the search. I just prefer to use the search because there's a lot of things here and I know exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll press shift A and then you can click on the search or press S and then I'm going to search for a grid. So a grid is basically just like a plane. So I'm gonna click on the grid and drop it down here and then we need to preview it. So I'm going to take the mesh right here and I'm going to put that into the geometry on the group output. Now, because we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, what you can also do is hold down the Shift and Alt key and then select different nodes. So just hold down the Shift and Alt key and then select different nodes and then it's going to plug it up. And so now you can see that there is a grid right there. Now I wanna make this grid much bigger and much longer. So on the size X, I'm just going to change this to a value of six so it is more wide. And then on the size Y, I'm going to change this to 200. So the X is gonna be six and then the Y is going to be 200. And so if you zoom out here, now you can see this is very long. And then I also need to add more geometry because we are going to be using this to create the mountains. And so right now there's only three vertices on the X and three vertices on the Y. You don't have to follow along with this part if you don't want to, but just to show you, I'm going to click right here and this is going to go to the viewport overlays and I can click on wireframe. And so you can see here's the wireframe and there's really not much geometry. So on the vertices X, I'm going to change this to 12. So just change that to 12. And now you can see it's kind of subdivided. And then I need to also turn the vertices Y up a lot so that it has a lot more vertices going back and forth. So on the vertices Y, I'm gonna change that to 300. So now you can see there that there's a lot of subdivisions there and that grid is very subdivided. Now I don't need to see the wireframe, so I'm just gonna click on this right here and then turn off the wireframe, but I just want to show you that subdivision. All right, now we also need to add a camera, so let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift S and then I'm going to move my mouse over here and go to the cursor to world origin and then release the shift and S button. That's just gonna make sure this 3D cursor is in the very center of the scene there. And when we add objects, the objects are going to be added wherever the 3D cursor is. So that's why I wanna press shift S, go to cursor to world origin, just so that it's in the center. So I'm now going to press shift A and I'm gonna go right down here and I wanna add a camera. Now the camera is gonna be pointed kind of at a random angle. It's gonna be pointed where we were looking. So what I wanna do is just clear the rotations. So I'm gonna to press Alt R and Alt R is going to clear the rotation of the camera so now it's pointed down. Now I want to rotate it up so I'm going to press R to rotate and then I'm going to type X to rotate it on the X axis. Then I can type in 9, 0 and enter so that it is looking straight over. And then to go into the camera's view I can press the 0 on the numpad that'll bring me into the camera's view. And then you can't really see anything that's because I need to press G to grab. Just make sure you have the camera selected by clicking right here. You can press G to grab, and then you can hit Z, and then you can bring the camera up on the Z axis like that. And then I wanna bring the camera back because right now it's in the very center, but I wanna bring it back so that we can see more of that grid. So I'm going to press G to grab, and then I'm going to hit Y to bring it on the Y axis. And so now I can just drag and I can bring that back. So I'm gonna move my mouse up until it's farther away and just bring it to about there. And if it's easier for you, you can also do this in the 3D space just by bringing the camera over on the Y axis. So just press G to grab and Y on the Y axis. And we're just gonna stick the camera right there at the very end of the grid. All right, and I'm gonna press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera's perspective. All right, so let's click back over here on the grid and then I'm gonna make this bigger and kind of zoom out here by scrolling with my mouse wheel. And then also just to make this a little bit bigger, I'm going to click right here and make this a bit smaller. And also we aren't doing any animation for a while. So I'm gonna click right here and just pull the timeline down so we have a little bit more space. All right, so I now basically want to displace the grid so that it looks like mountains. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and then I will click on the search. And then I'm going to type in set position. So we're gonna search for the set position node and then I just want to drop the set position right here. Now it's not really changing it and that is because we need to add some values into the position. So I'm going to use a texture to change the position. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to hit S for the search and I'm going to search for a Musgrave texture and let's drop the Musgrave right down here. And then I can plug the height of the Musgrave up to the position. Now that's not really going to work. You can see that the grid has now disappeared and that's because we need to do some things here to convert it to the proper data 
data that the set position can use. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a vector math node. So I'm going to click on the vector math, and we want to stick it right in here. Now I also want to add a position value. So I'm going to press Shift A again and hit S for the search, and I'm going to search for a position node. So it is a position value node. And then what I want to do is I want to take the position and put that into the top vector, and then the Musgrave is going to go into the bottom vector. So now it's actually using the Musgrave texture to distort it, and if you change the scale of the Musgrave texture, you can see it's going to change that detail there. So now the Musgrave texture is making it all bumpy. Now there is a bit of a problem here. You can see that the displacement is kind of bumping it all up over here, and I just want Want it to be going up and down so that it looks more like a mountain. So to fix this, I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a combine X, Y, Z node. So I'm going to click on this, and I'll just drop it down here. So we can break up the X, Y, and Z values, and then only tell it to be distorted or displaced on the Z axis. So I'm going to drop the combine X, Y, Z right here, and then we don't want it to be going on the X axis, so I'm going to take the Musgrave texture and put that into the Z axis. And now you can see that all those points are only being displaced up and down and that looks a lot better. Now because these are mountains I want them to be at the highest point in the center but then on the two sides I kind of want them to go back down. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a gradient texture and let's drop the gradient texture right up here. We can just bring this over and put the gradient above the Musgrave. So the gradient texture is basically just an even blending between white and black. So the gradient texture just goes from a white texture to a black texture. So I want to mix this in with the Musgrave texture, and then that way it'll start out higher and then get lower. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a mix RGB, and let's drop the mix RGB right here. So the mix is going to go into the combine XYZ, and then what I want to do is take the Musgrave texture and put that into color 2, and then I want to take the gradient texture and I'm going to put that into color 1 on the mix. And let's also press Control S to save our project. So now because we have that gradient there, this side is higher, but then and it gets lower as it goes over here. And then on the mix here, I also want to change this to add instead of mix. And then on the factor, I'm just going to change this down to like a 0.4. Now I do want to make the Musgrave texture stronger because you can see it's not very strong and it doesn't really look like mountains. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a math node. I'll just add in this math node and I'm going to drop it right in here after the Musgrave texture. And then right here on the add, I'm going to instead change this to multiply. So under functions right here, it's the third one, multiply. And so now what we can do is we can take this value and this value is going to multiply the Musgrave texture. And so it's going to make it stronger. So you can see if I turn this value up, it's multiplying those values. And so now the Musgrave texture is really bumpy and that looks better. So I'm just going to change the value on the multiply to like a 15. Now I also want to play around with how the Musgrave texture looks. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on the FBM and I'm going to instead change it to this one. It's the Het Tero terrain, if I'm pronouncing that right, the hetero terrain. So I'm going to change it to that one. I like the look of that better. And then let's play around with these values here. So on the scale, I'm just going to change this to like a 1.5. And now you can see that looks a lot better. It's not quite as sharp. It's a bit more bumpy. And then I do want it to have a lot of detail. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max, which is 15. And then on the dimension here, I just want to change this to like a 0.5. And that'll make it a bit more bumpy. And then I will just leave this at 2 and 0. So that is looking really cool. It's looking a lot more like mountains. Now you can see that it sort of looks like half of the mountains, but there aren't mountains over here on the other side, but we will fix that in a moment. Now this geometry node setup is going to get pretty big, and so I do want to organize it well, and that'll also help you to kind of understand the different parts. So to organize this better, I'm going to be using frames. So you can press Shift A, go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a frame. So let's click on this frame, and I'm just going to bring it here. So I can now add different nodes into the frame. So just press A to make sure everything is deselected. And then I'm going to press B and B is going to bring up the box select. And I'm just going to drag a box around all of these nodes. So not these green nodes, these are the geometry nodes, and then also not the group output, but everything else. So I'm now going to press G to grab and I'm going to click and drop these into this frame. And then I can click on the corner of the frame and I can just drag it around. Now we can also rename this frame. So I'm going to press the N key and that is going to bring up this side panel 
right here. And you can click over on node. And then if you have the frame selected, you can rename the frame by changing the label. So I'm going to rename the label to mountain texture. All right, mountain texture. And now you can see that it says mountain texture. So this is a very great way to organize our nodes to make it less confusing. So we know that all of these right here, all of these nodes is the mountain texture. And then that is going to go up to the set position. Now, also, if you want to, something cool that you can do is you can turn on this color right here. And then if you click on that, you can make this like a certain color. So if you want to do that, you can. I am not going to be using that. I just kind of like the dark color. But if you want to, you can can change the color of those frames. So I'm going to press N to close that side panel. Now back to the mountains, I want to make the other side of the mountain. So let's do that. So to make the other side of the mountain, I'm basically going to duplicate the geometry and then move it over and mirror it. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'll go to the search here and I'm going to search for a transform node. And let's drop the transform right here. And then I can hold down the Shift and Alt key and then just select the transform. And then I can bring the group output right there. Now I need to set the final geometry into the transform. So I'm going to click on the geometry right here and just drag it into the geometry of the transform. So I can now use these transform values to actually change where the geometry is. So I can change the transform and also the rotation and also the scale. Now I want to have two of them because I want one of the mountains to be over here and then I want another mountain to be over here and we'll link them up into the center. So I'm going to click on this transform and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it down here and then I'm going to click on the geometry and I will stick that into the geometry of the transform. So because we've split this up, we basically now have two different versions of our mountain. So now on this bottom one, I am just going to flip it so that it is basically mirrored. So I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and then just select the transform. So if I go here to the scale, if I change this X value, you can see that I can scale it. So on the X scale, I'm going to type in negative one and enter. So I can now join both of these mountains together. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a join geometry node. So we can drop the join geometry right here because if I hold down the shift and alt key and select this one, we have this version of the mountain and then I can shift alt select this one and we have that version. So I want to bring them both together into the same geometry. So I'm going to plug them both up to the join geometry, just plug them both up and then I can shift alt and select the join geometry. And now you can see we have two mountains. Now there is a problem, they're kind of going through each other, so we just need to change the transform and kind of move them over. So on this bottom transform, if I change the X value, that is going to move it. So I'm going to change the X value to a value of three, and that is going to move it over by three. And then right up here on the top one, on this X transform, I'm going to type in negative three. So now that I've done that, you can see that the mountains are both merging together in the very center of the 3D space. So they're merging right there in the center. Let's press control S again to save. Okay, so we have one of the mountains, but in the final animation, we have mountains on either side. So what I wanna do is basically do the same exact thing, and we're going to bring one mountain over here, we're gonna bring another mountain over here, and then we will join them together. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a transform node, and let's drop it up here, and then I wanna duplicate this node and bring it down so that one can be on the left and one can be on the right. So make sure you have the transform selected, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm just going to drop it down here. And then the join geometry can go into the geometry on this one and also the geometry on this one. And I'm just going to bring this over. And then I'm going to need to join these together later, so I might as well do it now. So I'm just going to click on the join geometry and I'll press Shift D and that is going to duplicate this node. And I'm going to stick it right here. So the group output is going to go into it so that we can preview it. And then I actually want to unplug this one because we don't want to join that together. I want to join this one up to the join geometry and this one as well. So because we've kind of duplicated these by adding the transforms, we now have two mountains on top of each other. So if you bring this over on the X, you can see we have two of those mountains. So right down here on the bottom one, on the X transform, I wanna bring this over. So I'm gonna type in negative 10 on the X, and that is going to bring that over. And then on the top one here on the X, I'm just gonna change that to 10. And that way we now have two mountains on either side. And if you press zero to go into the camera view, that is starting to look really cool. All right. Now in the final animation, the mountains have a glowing kind of pinkish purplish wireframe. And so let's create the wireframe. So what I'll do is use this final geometry and then create a wireframe. And that is gonna be kind of a separate node setup. And then we will join it back together with the original mountains. So to make the wireframe, I'm gonna press Shift A. Let's go to the search here. And I'm going to search for a mesh. And I'm gonna add a mesh 
to curve. So here it is, mesh to curve. So we're going to take the geometry and we are going to convert it to a curve. So let's just bring this over here and I'm going to take the geometry and let's put that into the mesh here on the mesh to curve. And then to preview it, I can shift alt and select it. And you can see that now that it's converted it to a curve, we have a wireframe. Now it doesn't have any thickness and because it doesn't have any thickness, it's actually not going to show up in the render. So we need to give it some thickness. So to give it some thickness, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a curve to mesh. So it's basically the opposite. So I'm going to click on this and drop it down here. So we've first taken the geometry and we've converted it to a curve. And then to give it thickness, we want to convert it back to a mesh. So I'm going to drop the curve to mesh back in here. Now we've converted it back to a mesh, but it still doesn't have any thickness. So we need to add a profile curve in here to tell it what thickness we want it to be. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to type in curve circle. So we're going to search for a curve circle and I can just click on this and drop it here. So if I shift alt and select this, I can preview it. So I'm just going to navigate over here. You don't have to follow along with this if you don't want to. Um, so you can see this is what the curve circle is. It's basically just a circle here. Now we're going to use this to tell it to make the wireframe. So this circle here is basically going to go along all of the wires on the wireframe. Now the resolution is pretty high detail and that's going to be really laggy. So on the resolution here, I'm just going to change the resolution to like a three. And so now it basically has a triangle shape, but that's all we need. And so this shape right here is going to go all along the wires and that'll give it some thickness. So let me just shift alt and select back on the curve to mesh, and then I'll press zero to go into the camera view. So what I want to do now is I want to take the curve circle and I'm going to put that into the profile curve. So what it's doing is it's taking that curve circle and it's bringing it all along the wireframe and giving it some thickness. Now it is way too thick right now. So I can turn down this radius value. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and then just drag this value. So now you can see that's much thinner. So on the radius here, I'm going to set this to a 0.013. So a 0.013, that is a value that I've found to work pretty well. Now I want to continue to organize my nodes very well. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a frame. Let's first do the other one over here. So I'm going to drop the frame down here and I'll just kind of bring it over here. I'll press A to deselect it. And then I'm going to press B for the box select. And I'm going to box select all of these nodes right here. So the set position and then the transforms, the join geometry, and then the other transforms in the join geometry. I'll press G to grab and I'm going to bring my mouse inside the frame and then place it right there. And then I'll just bring this over here. And then also this grid, I want to drop this into that frame and bring it over. And then I can just bring this back. So I'll just bring that back a little bit. Now, if for some reason you added in a node accidentally into a frame, you can select it and then you can press Alt P and Alt P is going to bring it out of the frame, but then you can just click and drag and drop it back in if you want it to be in the frame. Now I want to rename this just to organize it very well. Let's press control S to save our project. And then to rename this, I'm going to press the N key again, and that's going to open up this side panel. So on the label, I'm just going to rename this to mountains. So mountains, just like that, because these are all of the mountain nodes. Now over here, these three nodes right here, those are the mountain wireframes. So I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here. Let's search for another frame and I can click on this frame and just drop it up here. So I'll press A to deselect everything and then I can press B for the box select. And I just wanna select these three nodes and then I can click and drag and drop them right in there. And now they're inside this frame as well. And then this frame, I wanna add a label. So I'm gonna label this to mountains wireframe. So mountains wireframe. So now this is the mountains, but then this is the mountains wireframe. And then let's press the N key to close the side panel. I can just zoom out here. So if I hold down the shift and alt key and then just select this join geometry, we have these mountains and these are using faces. But then if I just shift alt and select this curve to mesh here, you can see that is the wireframe. So I want to mix these two together because I do want to see the wireframe, but I also want to be able to see the original mesh. So we're going to press shift A and you might have already guessed what we're going to add. I'm going to go to the search here and we're going to search for a join geometry. So I can click on this and just drop it right down here. And then 
then I want to take the mesh and let's put that into the geometry and then the join geometry from this one from the mountains is going to go there. So now if I zoom in here you can see we still have the original mountains but we've also added the wireframe and that is exactly what we want. So that's really cool. Let's press control S again to save. All right so the mountains are pretty much done. We will be doing a little bit to them later but now let's add the ground plane. So I'm just going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to add another grid because we want to add a grid for the ground. So I'll just drop the grid here and actually I'll press G to grab and I'll put the grid right over here so the grid on the ground is going to be after the mountains wireframe and let's also bring the group output over. Now we can't see the grid and that is because I need to shift alt and then select the grid and then if you zoom in there you can see it's pretty small but it's right there. Now I want to make the grid a lot bigger so let's take the size X and I'm going to turn that up to like a 20 so that it is much more long and you can see there it is it's pretty small you can't really see it in the camera view but it, there it is it's much more longer now and then on the size y i want to make that an 80. so i'm going to set that to 80 so it's much longer and then if i press zero to go into the camera view you can see that better now i want to bring it down because right now it's a bit too high up so to bring it down i'm going to press shift a i'm going to press S for the search and I'm going to type in transform. Let's add another transform node and I'm just going to drop that right there and that way we'll be able to move the grid. So if we change the translation Z that is going to bring the grid up and down and so I want to bring it down so I'm just going to type in negative one and negative one is just going to bring it down a little bit and then I want to join the grid and the mountains together so I'm going to click on the join geometry and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and let's just drop it right here. So the transform is going into the join geometry and then this one here from the mountains we can put that in there as well and so now we can see both of them and as you can see I made the grid way too small so I want to make that much longer so let's go back over here to this grid and on the size Y if I make that bigger you can see it's going to be a lot longer so I'm going to change this to 200 so just make it 200 and now if I zoom in here to the mountains you can see that the grid on the ground is the exact same width as the mountains so that is much better let's press zero to go into the camera's view so that's really starting to look cool and then just like the rest of the geometry node setup I do want to organize this really well so you can add another frame by pressing shift a and searching for a frame I can also just click on the mountains wireframe and I can press shift D to duplicate it drop it right here and then I can just drag these two nodes inside that one and then I need to rename this so let's just bring this down and I'll select that frame and I'll press N to open up the side panel and then on the label here I just want to rename this to ground because because it is the ground all right, and then I can press N to close that. All right, now I also want to add a wireframe for the ground as well. Now we already have a basic wireframe setup, so I'm just gonna use this setup and duplicate it. So just press A to make sure everything is deselected, and then I will press B for the box select, and I'm just going to box select all of the wireframes. So the mountain wireframe, and then the curve, and the mesh to curve, and curve to mesh. I'm now gonna press Shift D to duplicate it, and I'm gonna drop it right up here. And then this one, this is gonna be the ground wireframe. So if you click on the frame you can press N to open up the side panel and then I can rename the label to ground wireframe all right just like that and then I will press the N key to close the side panel so then to preview it I'm going to press shift alt and then select the curved mesh and you can't see anything that's because we actually need to give it some geometry so let's take the ground geometry we're going to take the transform geometry and we're going to put that into the mesh so now if you kind of look over here if I select this you can see there is the wireframe but the vertices X and Y aren't very much and so I want to make those bigger so that we actually have more of the wireframe. So back here on the ground grid, I'm going to change the X to seven, and you can see that is looking a lot better. And then on the vertices Y, I'm going to change that to 50. So that's looking much better. And so now we actually have a nice grid there. And then I want to join the ground back up with the ground wireframe. So again, I can just click on the join geometry and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'll just drop it over here just to make it a bit more simple and a bit more visually appealing just to duplicate those join geometries I could just use like one join geometry for most of these um, but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to duplicate the join geometry I'll take this one and plug it right up here and now you can see we are joining the final thing up with the ground wireframe now in the 3d space here you can see that there's that ground grid and that ground grid is kind of in the way and I don't really want to see it because we also have the actual geometry grid so what I'm going to do is get rid of that so I'm just going to go up here move my mouse up here and then I'm going to scroll with the scroll wheel 
wheel and I can click right here to the view overlays and I'm going to turn off the floor and that will just kind of get rid of that viewport grid and then I will also turn off the axes because I don't need to see those. So now that I've turned that off that just looks a bit nicer in the 3D space because we can't see that extra grid there. All right now back to the mountains. I want the mountains to look a little bit different on each side because you can see this mountain looks exactly the same as this mountain over here. There's this big peak and then right over there there's this big peak. So what I want to do is offset the mountains and then that way it'll just look a little bit different on both sides. So I'm going to click with my mouse wheel and just kind of move back over here to the mountains. And I'm going to go right here to the top right transform. So on this top right transform, if I change the Y value, you can see it's going to offset the mountains on that side. So on this transform here, on the Y transform, I'm going to type in negative 100. And that way it's going to bring this back by 100. So now you can see those mountains are offset. And later on in the video, we'll be adding the array modifier. And it's basically going to duplicate this entire thing. And then it'll move it over. And that way it'll connect. And so it will look like a looping animation. It kind of does end right there, but we will be arraying this object out so that it continues to loop. All right, so let's go ahead and do some materials now. So I actually want to split this window so that we have the shader editor. So I'm going to move my mouse right up here when the crosshair appears, and then I can click and just drag this down to split the window. So this is the geometry nodes, but I want to click right up here. I want to change this to the shader editor. So now we have the shader editor right here. Just make sure that you have this object selected and we can create create a new material by clicking on the new button and then just navigate over here to the shader nodes. So I want this new material to be like the shiny black material. So I'm just going to click on the material and I can just call it reflective. All right, there is the reflective material. And then in the 3D space, I'm going to hold down the Z button and go to the material preview and then let go just so that we can preview the material. Now we're not actually able to see the reflective material on this object. And that is because we need to tell the geometry nodes to add the material to the geometry. So to be able to see this material on the mountains, I'm going to press Shift A in the geometry nodes. I'm going to press S for the search, and I'm going to search for the set material node. Okay, so set material, and I want to bring this down here. So right after the mountains, I want to put the set material right up here. So after the mountains on this geometry here, I'm going to stick it right there, and then we can set a material, and it's going to set this material to the rest of that geometry. So I'm going to click right here, and then I'm going to choose the reflective. And now it's actually going to use this material on those mountains. So I can now take the base color and I'm going to make that fully black. And now you can see that taking effect. And then let's make this a bit smaller because we aren't really using this for now. So I'm going to make the base color fully black. And then on the specular value, I'm going to turn that all the way up to one so that it is more reflective. Now I also want to add a little bit of variation in the roughness. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search here. And I'm going to search for a noise texture. So we're going to be using a procedural noise texture. And then just select the noise texture. And we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on earlier in this tutorial. So with the noise texture selected, you can press Control. T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now we don't need the mapping so I can just select it and press X to delete it and then I want to plug the object up to the vector on the noise texture and the object coordinates is going to place the noise texture on the objects more evenly and then if you hold down the control and shift key hold down the control and shift key and select the noise texture just click on it to select it you can see that noise texture there on the mountains. Now I want to plug the noise texture into the roughness so let's take the factor and I'm going to put that into the roughness and then just control shift hold down the control and shift key and select the principal BSDF and you can zoom in here and see what that's doing now I want to have more control over this so let's press shift a I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here between the noise texture and the principled so now if I click and drag these tabs you can see it's going to change how rough it is now I'm going to click on this white tab right here I'm going to click on the white and I'm going to make it much more darker and if it's more darker you can see it's going to be more reflective and if you want to use the exact same color that I'm going to be using Using, then you can click over on this hex value and you can go to the hex and you can type in 767676. So that is the gray color that I'll be using. So you can see that there's just a little bit of noise there and the roughness is just a little bit different. And then I also want to change a few things on the noise texture. So on the detail here, I'm going to turn that all the way up to the max, which is 15. So there is more detail there. And then also on the scale here, I just want to change that down to like a two so that it's not quite as big and that's looking pretty good. All right. And 
and that is the reflective material. So we are going to be using the shader nodes later, but for now I don't really want to see them. So I'm going to click right here and drag and bring this up and just kind of squish it way down. And then when we want to use the materials again, we can just click and drag and open this up. But for now I want to see the geometry nodes. And then let's go into the rendered view. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view just so that we can see how that's looking. Now I also want to turn on a few EV settings just to make EV look a bit nicer. So I'm going to click right here and drag this open and I'm going to go right here to the render properties. So right here under EV you can change some different settings. So I'm going to turn on the ambient occlusion, the bloom, and the screen space reflections and the motion blur. So the motion blur is just going to add a little bit of blur during the animation and the screen space reflections and ambient occlusion will make the shading look a bit nicer and kind of make the shadows nicer. And then the bloom is going to add a little bit of a glow along the wireframes because the wireframes are going to be emitting light. So I also want to set this black reflective material to the ground as well. So right here we have the mountains wireframe. Let's uh, make this a bit smaller and I'm going to go right over here and you can see here is the ground. So what I can do is I can bring the set material over. I can duplicate it and put it right here on the ground and then that'll make the ground the same material. So I'm going to click on the set material and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and let's stick it right here. So it's going to go between the ground transform and the join geometry. And now you can see that we have that black reflective material on the ground. All right, so now let's create the material for the purple glow on the mountain wireframe. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to bring this way down and I'll just bring it all the way down here. So now this is full size and the geometry nodes is minimized. So what I'm going to do is click on the X button to get rid of this. And then I just want to click on new to add a new material. And then I want to change the name. So on the name, I'm going to rename this to purple glow. So purple glow. So now to make this glowing, I want to click on this emission here and I want to make this fully white. So on the principled BSDF, we can actually make the principled glowing. Now you could add an emission shader if you want to, but it's easy enough just to do it with the principled BSDF. So on the emission right here, I'm going to make this all the way white and then I can just kind of make it a pink kind of color. Now we can't really see what it's doing. So let's click right here and we're going to bring this up and kind of swap it so that we can go back to the geometry nodes. And so right over here on the mountain wireframe, I want to add a set material right here, and then we can set the purple glow to the wireframe. So I'm going to click on this set material. I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it, and let's just drop it right up here above the join geometry after the mountains wireframe. Now right now it is set to reflective, so let's click on the X button to get rid of that, and then click on the set material, and I can add the purple glow. So now I want to go back and kind of edit the material, so I can move my mouse right up here to when those arrows appear, and I can just swap it again. So I'm just going to bring this back down here. So what I'm going to do is actually turn the emission strength up. And when you turn that up, you can now see that it's going to be much more bright. So I'm going to turn the emission strength up to like a 10 and you can really see that bloom taking effect. So if you click and kind of drag this out, you can open up the bloom settings and you can see without the bloom that looks really bland, but then with the bloom, there's all that glow there. So that is really cool. And then you can also change the emission right here. So if you want to change it to kind of a deeper purple or more more of a bluish purple, you could change that, but you can of course change this to any emission color that you want. And I'm not going to make it super saturated because if you make it super saturated, there actually isn't any of that white there, but I do want kind of the middle to be kind of white. And then I want the kind of glare around it to be a bit more pinkish or purplish. Now I actually want to play around with some of the bloom settings. So right over here, if you open up the bloom tab, I want to turn this intensity up to actually make it a bit more intense. So I'm going to turn the intensity up to like a 0.2. So 0.2 is going to make it much more intense. So now you can see it's glowing a lot, but you can see that it's also really big and it kind of looks foggy. And so I want to turn this radius value down. So I'm going to turn the radius value down to a 2. 0.25, so a 2.25. And now that intensity is still the same, but the radius is much smaller, so that glow is much more closer to the wireframe, and that is what I want. All right, so that is it for the purple glow material. So I now want to create another material, and that one's going to be a red glow, and then I want to put the red glow right down here on the wireframe on the ground. So what I want to do is actually just duplicate this material, and then we can just change the color. So to duplicate this material, I can click on this button right here. It kind of looks like 
like two pieces of paper. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to duplicate the material. Now we need to rename the material. So I'm going to get rid of the dot zero zero one and I'm just going to click with my arrow keys, just kind of bring that over and then click on the backspace to get rid of that. And I can rename this one to red glow. So I'll hit enter. So now it is a separate material, but it still has the same data. So if you click right here, you can now see we have the purple and the red and the reflective. Now I can't really see it right now. So I want to actually put it on the ground. So let's just click and we're going to swap these. I'll bring that up and I can also just click and drag and make this small. We don't need that for now. All right, so then what I want to do is I want to set the red to the ground wireframe. So right over here, we need to add the set material. So I'm going to click on this set material and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. And I want to drop it right in here between the ground wireframe and the join geometry. So I'm just going to stick it right there. Now I want to click on this to get rid of the reflective. And then I want to click right here and I'm going to instead change it to the red glow. So now we have the red glow there, um, but it still looks pink. And that's because we just need to edit the colors. So again, let's swap these. So I'm going to click and we're going to drag this down and swap it back to the shader editor. And then on the emission color here, I can just change that to whatever color that I want. So I'm going to make it kind of like a red color, not super saturated, but just kind of something like that. And you can see if I make it less saturated, if I make it more towards the white, then it looks white in the middle, but then it has that glowing color on the edges. And you can change the emission strength if you want to, but I think a value of 10 looks pretty good. So we're going to swap the editor windows again and go back to the geometry nodes. So I'm going to move my mouse right here, click and drag, and we're just going to swap that back to the geometry nodes. Let's zoom out here. All right. So now what I want to do is actually add the array to actually array this object over. And that way it will continue to repeat. And so then when we do the animation, we can actually make it a looping animation. So I'm going to click right here and kind of drag this panel out. And then I'm going to click right here on the modifier properties. When you add geometry, nodes, it actually adds a geometry node modifier. So I now want to add another modifier and array it. So I'm going to click on add modifier, and then let's go right down here. And under generate, it's right here, the top one array. So the array modifier, if I just hold down the Z button, I can go back to the solid view. So the array modifier is going to duplicate the geometry and just move it over. Now I don't want to be moving it over on the X axis, you can see right here, there is a factor of one on the X. So I'm going to turn the X to instead to zero. And then I want to instead bring it out on the Y axis. So right here on the Y, if I click and drag, you can see that I'm bringing that out. So on the Y factor, I'm going to bring this over to a value of exactly one. Now, when I bring that over to exactly one, you can see that there is a big gap right here. And then there also is a gap right here. So to fix this gap, I'm going to be taking the ground grid and I'm going to be moving it back. So what I'm going to do is just click right up here to select the geometry nodes again. So you can click on those little dots right there um, and just select the geometry nodes modifier. I'm going to make this a bit smaller and just make this a bit bigger. So I want to move the grid over and that will bring it back. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go to the ground and then I'm going to go to the transform. So if I change the Y location on this transform, that is going to move the grid. So on the Y translation, I'm going to type in negative 200 and then enter. So now that I've moved it over by a negative 200, you can see that, that grid is way over here. And so you can kind of think about this as being like puzzle pieces and we're basically sticking the puzzle pieces together. So now right over here, I can just make this a bit bigger and I can go to the array. And if I turn the array back down, I can bring the Y factor down and we can put those together. And so on this array modifier, I want to bring the Y value to exactly 0.5. So I'm going to bring it over to exactly 0.5. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that they're merging together. So you can't really see where the split is. So if I just bring the split out, you can start to see that. So if I zoom right in here, if I bring that split out, you can see the mountains are splitting right here. But because I arrayed the object over exactly by 0.5, now the two mountains are joining together right there. And so that's exactly what I want. So now if I change the count up, I can actually change the count up on the array modifier, and that is going to duplicate it and move it over. So I can just continue to do that as many times as I need. And as I turn it up, it is merging the objects together and it looks seamless. So if I press the zero on the numpad, you can see how that's looking and it just continues to go farther and farther back. So I am actually going to turn the count all the way up to a six. And if you turn the count up to six, that's pretty far back. Um, you could turn it up more if you want to, but six is going to be fine because you can see if you look here, if you just kind of zoom back to see the entire camera, that is pretty small. And we're also going to be adding some objects in here, which will kind of hide the stuff in the background. So let's press control S again to save the project. 
All right, so I now want to add the cube, which is going to be in the center of the scene. So just like all the other objects, we are going to be using the geometry nodes to add the cube. So I'm just going to navigate right up here and then I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a cube within the geometry nodes. So I'm just going to place it here and then I want to add a frame as well. So I can actually just click on one of these frames. I can press shift D to duplicate and then let's click on the cube and I'm going to drop it in here and then I can also click on the frame and let's press N to open up the side panel and I can just rename this to cube and then I'll press N to close that. Now just like all the other objects I want to be able to see the wireframe so let's just duplicate the wireframe over and just add it in. So I'm just going to press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select all of the objects here. I'll press shift D to duplicate and let's just drop the wireframe over there. And then I'm just going to select this frame right here. I'll press X to delete. X is going to delete that frame. I can press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select these nodes and I'll press G to grab and just stick them inside the cube there. And I'll just bring that up. And then to preview this, I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and just select that. Now we can't see the cube and that's because we need to plug it up. So let's take the mesh and we're going to plug that into the mesh right there. Let me just press period on the numpad. That's going to zoom me into the mesh and I can see it. All right, I'm going to bring the group output over here. And then what we also want to do is combine them together. So I'm just going to bring these up. So I'm just going to bring these nodes up here and we need to combine it. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a join geometry node. Let's drop the join geometry right here. So we're going to drop it inside the cube and then we're going to drop it right here. So these three nodes right here, these nodes create the wireframe, but then we also want to see the original cube. So I can plug the cube into the join geometry. And there we go. So now we have a cube with a wireframe. So I also want to add the materials. So let's do that. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for the set material. I'm going to drop the set material node right over here for now. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button, go to the material preview and let go just so that we can preview that. So I could just put it right right here, but if I put it right here, then it's going to have the same material for the wireframe cube and the mesh cube. So what I want to do is put the set materials before the join geometry, and that way the cube can be one material and the wireframe can be the other one. So I'm going to bring the set material over here and just put it right here before the join geometry. And then I'm also going to click on the set material. I'll press shift D and shift D is going to duplicate the node and I'm just going to stick it right here. So this one over here, this is going to be the wireframe. So if I click click right here, I can set the wireframe. Now I actually don't want any of these because I want to use a blue wireframe. So for now, let's just click on this set material down here and I'm going to choose the reflective. All right, now we need to make the other material, the blue glowing. So what I'm going to do is move my mouse right here and I'll just bring that over. And that way we can now just see the shader nodes. That's really convenient, just moving this up and down. So what I want to do is create another type of glow, which is going to be blue. So to duplicate it, I can click on this button right here and it looks like two pieces of paper and that's going to duplicate the material so it's a separate material but it has the same information. So I can now just click on this to rename it and I want to change the name to blue glow. Okay, blue glow. Now on the emission right here, I'm just going to make it a blue color, something like that. Now we can't really see what it looks like because it hasn't been applied yet. So let's click right down here when those arrows appear, we'll swap the window and then I'm going to click right here and let's click on the blue glow. And there we go. That is looking super cool. So I now want to swap these again by clicking and dragging and just bringing this down right there. And then I can just change this so I'm gonna make it a stronger blue color and then for these blue ones I actually want to make it stronger I want to make the strength bigger and that way there's gonna be more of a glow so on the emission strength right here I'm gonna double it so I'm gonna change the emission strength to 20 instead of 10 and now that's gonna be brighter you can see as I turn it up it's gonna be brighter so on the emission right here I can now make this a deeper blue color um, just something like that is pretty good all right that's looking really cool so let's now swap the windows by clicking right here and we can drag up to swap those windows. And then I want to join these all together so we can actually just use the same join geometry node or you could duplicate another if you want to. But I'm just gonna bring the join geometry over and then I'm gonna hold down the shift and alt key and select it to preview it. So I'm now going to select the cube frame and I'll just drag it and I'm just gonna stick it right up here, right above the ground wireframe. I could also maybe bring this a bit closer. If you wanted to, you could also put the set material in the ground wireframe, that makes sense. So I might as well do that, just stick that there. 
We'll just bring that up there as well. All right, so now what I want to do is take this cube here, and I'm going to put the geometry from the join geometry in the cube, and I'm going to put that into the final join geometry. So we're going to use this final join geometry to join everything together. I'm also just going to bring this down here, kind of bring this over just to organize these a little bit better, and I will bring this down, and then I can select this frame as well and just kind of bring that in a little bit. And I will bring that down there. So we now have our cube right there in the 3D scene but I want to rotate the cube and then I also want to be able to animate it. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a transform. There's the transform node. Let's drop it right in here. So we're going to drop it before the final join geometry and then I'm actually just going to stick it inside the cube there. So let me just make these a little bit smaller and maybe bring this cube back a little bit. Just kind of bring that back a little bit just to organize this a little bit better. All right, I'm going to zoom into the transform. Now I want to make this cube a little bit bigger because it is a little bit small. If I press zero on the numpad, that'll take me into the camera view. And you can see it is a little bit small. It also is kind of far away, um, but I do just want to make it a little bit bigger. So I can actually change the size of it right here on the original cube node. So I am going to click and then hold my mouse down and then drag down and then let go. And that way I can type in a value and it's going to change all the values at the same time. So I'm going to change it to like a 1.2 and that'll make the cube a bit bigger. And I can also just zoom into it if I want to. I'm just going to zoom into that. All right, I'm going to go back over here to the transform and I now want to rotate this. So during the animation, I want the cube to kind of rotate around. I want it to spin, but I want it to spin on one of the corners. So to do that, I can actually change the rotation X and you can see I can rotate that down. Now, if I want to rotate it all the way down so that it is right on this corner here, I can type in on the rotation X, I can type in a value of 45 because if I turn it to 90, that's going to go all the way around. It's not going to look any different. So 45 is half of 90 and you can see that now that is right there on the ground. And then I also want it to be on one of these little points so I can change the Y value and I'm going to rotate the Y value up and I'm actually going to change it to a value of exactly 35. So on the Y rotation, 35. And then I also need to move it up just a little bit because you can see it's going through the ground a little bit. So on the Z transform, I'm going to turn it to a 0.07. 0.07 and now it's just sitting right there. All right, that's really cool. So now it's kind of just like balancing on one of its points. So if I now rotate this on the Z axis, I can click on the rotation Z and rotate that. And you can see that that is the animation that I'm going for. So that's going to be really cool in the final animation. So during the final animation, we're going to have it rotate like three times in the looping animation. So that is it for the cube nodes and we will be animating this later. Um, but now I want to add the different cones. So we're going to be adding three three different cones. So I am going to be adding the cones right down here on the bottom, just because if we do them all at the top, that'll get really tall. So I'm just going to put some cones down here as well, and then we will plug them up to the join geometry. Now, just like this cube here, I also want the cone to have the reflective material and the blue material, and I also want it to have the wireframe. So we can actually just duplicate all these nodes. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything, and then I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to box select these right here. So I'm going to box select all of those and I'll press shift D to duplicate and I'm going to move them all down here. And then to not be confused, I want to rename this. So I'm going to click on the frame and I can press N to open up the side panel right here. And then on the label, I can just call this cone one because we're going to be having three cones and then I can press N to close that. Now this isn't a cone right now. It is a cube. So let's add a cone. So I'm going to press shift A press S for the search and I can search for a cone. So there's actually a cone node and I want to drop the cone node right here. So just drop it inside the frame and then I want to replace it for the cube. So I'm going to take the cone mesh, put that into the mesh to curve and that way it'll make it a wireframe and then I'll put the mesh into the set material as well. So now this cube node, I can just select this and press X to delete it and I can bring the cone up just like that. And then you can't see the cone and that's because we need to go right over here and we need to plug the transform up to the join geometry. And now you can see the cone. Now I don't want the cone to be rotated over like that. So let's just reset these values. So I'm going to turn this to zero and this to zero and this to zero, just so that it's back to its default position with the transform. Now you could leave this cone pretty detailed if you want to, but I actually want to make it like a pyramid shape. So I'm going to zoom in here and you can see there's the vertices right here. So if I turn that down, it's going to be less detail. So for a pyramid shape, you're going to need to change it to four. Um, you could change it to more if you want to. That's totally up to you. You could also turn it down to three. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to go with four vertices and that way it's a pyramid shape. 
All right, so let's navigate over here. And on this cone, I want to change the transform because you can see it's kind of floating and I don't want it inside that cube. So I'm going to press the zero on the numpad. That's going to take me into the camera's perspective and I can just kind of see how that's looking. So I'm going to scroll with my scroll wheel and just kind of zoom in here so that I can see that. So now I just want to play around with these transforms. So I'm going to bring the X one up and that way it'll just bring it over. So I'm going to bring it over to the side, just right about there. If you want to use the same value, I'm using a value of 1.2. 96. So it's just going to be over there. And then I also want to bring it down. So let's bring it down on the Z. And I also want to make the cone smaller. Um, I want to make the cone just half of its size. So I'm actually going to click right here on the scale and then drag down and then let go. And that way I can change all the values at the same time. And I'm just going to change it to like a 0.5 so that it's not quite as big. And then on the Z translation, I'm just going to bring it down to like a negative one. So it's basically on the ground. And then I can also bring it over on the Y axis and I want to make this much closer. So I'm going to make it much closer to the camera and I'm actually going to go with like a negative 71. So it's much closer to the camera. So that is where I want the first cone. So I now want to duplicate the cone two more times, then we'll put them some other places. So just press A to make sure everything is deselected. Let's also press control S again to save the project. And then I'll press B for the box select. And I'm going to drag a box around all of cone one. I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate it, drop the whole thing down here and shift D to duplicate it and drop the whole thing down here. So it's basically the same thing, but we'll just change the transforms and the scale. So I'm going to click on this cone one here. I'll press N to open this up on the side panel and on the node here, I can rename the label to cone two. And then let's also click on this cone one here. And this one I want to rename to cone three. And then I can press N to close that. All right, now I need to be able to see them. So I'm going to plug cone two up to the join geometry and also cone three, you can just click on this, pull out a wire, and then you can just kind of push with your mouse, kind of push up, and that's going to bring the view up and I can stick it into the join geometry. All right, so let's zoom in to the cone two transform. Let's zoom in there and then we can change where that is. So I want to bring this cone over to the other side. So I'm going to change the X value and I'm going to bring that into a negative value and just kind of drag it over to about there. And I'm actually going to go with like a negative 2.4 that is good so it's kind of over there on the other side and then i also want to bring it back so it's a bit farther away on the y and i'm actually going to make this about a negative 36 so it's farther back there and then i do want this one to be an even smaller one so on the scale here i'm going to click drag down let go and then i can make this one just like a 0.3 so it's even smaller all right, that's pretty good. So we now have kind of a bigger cone and then a smaller cone. All right, that's good for the placement of cone two. So let's just go down here to cone three and we will change this one. So I'm going to bring this one over to the other side as well. And I'll bring this over to like a negative 0.75. If you want to do the exact same value that I'm doing, just like a negative 0.75, um, but just about there. And then I'm going to bring this way far back because I do want this one to be pretty far. So I'll bring it way over there and specifically Specifically, I'm going to use a value of 6.5. So it's over there behind that cube. And then I do want to make this one a little bit smaller. So on the scale here, I can click and then drag down and I'll make this one like a 0.4, just a 0.4. So it's a bit smaller. Press control S again to save. So now you can see that we just have three different cones or pyramids and they're just kind of scattered around. Now, what's really cool in the final animation is we're going to animate this. So if I go right back over here to the top cone, the cone one, I'm going to animate the Z rotation. So we're going to be animating this and that way the pyramids will kind of spin around and that looks pretty cool, kind of abstract and sci-fi. So let's go ahead and animate it now. So I need to be able to see the timeline. So I'm going to just hover my mouse right here and then click and drag up. And that is going to uh, bring up that timeline. We just kind of squish the timeline down. And then I want to move over to frame one. So I'm just going to go to frame one and we are going to add some keyframes in here. So I'm just going to hover my mouse over this value and I'm going to press I and that is going to insert a keyframe right there. So I now want to move over to the end frame, which is going to be 400. I actually want to move over to frame 401 and that way it'll ensure that it's a looping animation. So let me just do that. So I first need to set the end frame. So right here on the end, I'm going to set the end frame to 400. And that way you can see that the lighter gray ends at 400. Now, if I made this go from one to 400, then frame one and 400 would be ex exactly the same. And so what I want to do is actually move over to frame 401. So I'm going to just click and drag right up here on the numbers and kind of bring this over to frame 401. Um, you can also just click right here on this value and type in 
401, and that's going to bring us over to frame 401. So I now want to rotate this pyramid two times. So I'm going to click on this Z value right here, and rotating it around once is 360. So if you type in 360, that is going to rotate it all the way around once. Now I want to rotate it twice because rotating it around once is just a little bit slow. So we can actually have Blender do the math for us. So what you can do is you can click on the little star. I have a star on my numpad and also I can hold down the shift key and hit shift eight. Shift eight is also going to add the star there. So just add one star and that is telling Blender to times the number. I can now just type in two and then enter. So by putting the star there, it is telling it to times 360 by two. So 360 times two is 720. So that's a really quick way to have Blender do the math for you if you want to times a value. Now we need to add a keyframe there because if we just kind of move the timeline, it's not going to save that keyframe because we haven't actually placed that as a keyframe. So I'm just going to hover my mouse over the rotation values and then make sure you're on frame 401, so 401. I'm now going to press I and that is going to insert another keyframe right there. And then I want to be able to see the keyframes, so just make sure you select the object and also make sure you select the transform node. And then you can click with your mouse wheel and kind of bring this timeline down. And you can now see, if you zoom out here, you can now see see that there are some keyframes right here. So these keyframes are yellow because we have this transform selected. So the keyframes are represented by these diamonds here inside the timeline. So we have a keyframe at frame one and a keyframe at frame 401. Now, if I play through the timeline, you can press the space bar to play. That's going to play the timeline. You can zoom in here and you can see that there we go. It is now rotating. Now you might notice something as it comes to the end here, it starts to slow down. And then as it starts up again, when it goes back to to frame one, it starts to speed up. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to be moving at the same speed the entire time. So to fix this, just make sure this object is selected in the 3D space and also make sure the transform node is selected. And then in the timeline, you can hover your mouse over the timeline and press the A key. And that is going to make sure the keyframes are selected. So you can see it's going to toggle between selecting and deselecting the keyframes. So I'm now going to hover my mouse over the timeline and I'm going to press the T button. So the T button is going to bring up the set keyframe interpolation. Now on default, it is set to BZA. And so BZA is a smooth animation. So it starts to speed up. And then as it gets to the end of the keyframe, it slows down. You can see there's a little representation right there in the thumbnail, but I instead want to change it to linear. And that way it's going to go from the first keyframe to the second keyframe at the exact same speed. So I'm going to click on linear. And now if I play this, it's going to stay at the same speed as it rotates through the entire animation. So I'm going to just go over here to the end and you can see it's still going at the same exact speed and then it jumps back to frame one and it's still going at the same exact speed and that's exactly what I want. All right so I now want to duplicate these keyframes and I want to put them over at the other cones. Now if you wanted to you could just go down here to the other transforms and you could just do the exact same thing so you could manually animate them but instead I'm going to copy and paste the same keyframes. So what I'm going to do is click on the transform here and then make sure you have the object selected and press A to make sure those keyframes are selected. In the time line with my mouse hovered over the timeline, I'm going to press control C and that is going to copy the keyframes. I'm now going to go right down here to the second one. So this is on cone two and I'm going to select the transform. Now I want to go to frame one so I can actually just click right here, type in frame one and then hit enter and that's going to take me to frame one. Now I can't paste the keyframes until I have an animated value. So you can't paste them unless the value is already animated. So on frame one, I'm just going to hover my mouse over this rotation here on the second transform on the cone two. So go to the transform on the cone two, hover your mouse over the rotation values, and you can press I and that's going to insert keyframes. So I can now just hover my mouse over the timeline and, and make sure the transform is selected when you do that, make sure that the transform node is selected. So just hover your mouse over the timeline and I'm going to press control V. So control V now is going to paste those keyframes that we copied. So we pressed control C to copy copy those keyframes, and now I'm pasting them on this transform. So now if I play through this, I can just go right over here and I can see that it is animated the same exact way. So that's just a super quick way to copy and paste the keyframes. So I now want to do the same thing right over here in this last one on the cone 
3. So again, just make sure this object is selected, make sure the transform node is selected on the cone 3, and then I want to go back to frame 1, so I can just click right here, I can type in 1 and enter, just make sure you are on frame 1, and then just hover your mouse over this value, and you can press I, and that is going to insert a keyframe. And then now that this is a animated value, I can hover my mouse over the timeline, and I can press Control V. And again, that is going to paste the keyframes that we copied, and I can play through this and you can see that cone is rotating the same way. So I'll press Control S to save. All right, so that's it for the cone animations. Now we need to animate the cube as well, so let's animate the cube. So I'm just gonna navigate right up here. I'm just gonna click with my mouse wheel and just kind of move over here, and then I can zoom with my mouse wheel. So I'm gonna go over to here to the uh, cube, and I'm gonna go over here to the transform. So we're gonna do a very similar thing, but there are two things I'm gonna do different. I want the cube to be rotating a bit faster, so we're gonna have it do three rotations instead of two, and then I also want it to be moving the opposite direction just to give a little bit more variation. So let's click right here. I'm going to go to frame one, and then I want to animate the rotation Z. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the value, and I'm going to press I, and that is going to add a keyframe. And then again, we want to move to frame 401, because if we move to frame 400 and then rotate it exactly over by three rotations, then frame one and frame 400 are going to be exactly the same because the cube will be at the exact same spot. So we need to go over to frame 401 and that way instead of it going to the same keyframe right when it's going to hit 401 it'll actually jump back to frame one let's click right here and i'm going to type in frame 401 or you can also just click and drag and move that over and i now want to rotate this over three times and i also want to rotate it on a negative value so that it rotates the other way just to add some variation so i'm going to click on the z value and i want to type in 360 so i'm going to type in 360 and then what i want to do is i want to hit the star and that is going to times the value and then I want to type in 3 and that way it is going to times 360 by 3 and then I will hit enter and that is 1080 and so that way it's going to rotate around three times and then I did want to make it a negative value so I can now just click on the value right here I can click right here and I can just hit the negative button and enter and that way it's going to rotate the other way so just make sure you're in frame 401 and then just make sure your mouse is hovered over any of the rotation values and I'm going to press I again to insert a keyframe. Now if you play through this you can see that at the starting it's kind of slow and then it speeds up and then it slows down. So again I need to change the keyframe interpolation to linear. So just make sure you have this object selected and then also make sure you have the transform selected and you should see those keyframes right there in the timeline. You can also click with your mouse wheel and just drag up if you don't see them and then just double tap the A key in the timeline to make sure both of them are selected. I'm now going to press T and then again I want to change it to linear because Bezier is the default but I want it to be consistent so I want to change it to linear and now if you press the spacebar to play just play through the timeline you can see that it doesn't slow down and then speed up it just stays at the exact same speed so let's press Control S again to save all right, so we're going to be doing a very similar thing like we did with the cones, but we're going to be adding some icospheres now. So I'm actually going to go right down here to cone one. And because this is already pretty much set up the same exact way, I'm just going to duplicate this and then add an icosphere instead. So I'll press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select all of cone one. And then I'm going to kind of zoom out and move up here. And I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and bring the entire thing right up here. So we're going to be having two different icospheres, but let's do the first one. So I'm first going to click right here just to select the frame and I'm going to press N to open up the side panel and I can just call this sphere one. All right. And then I can press N to close the side panel. So then right here, we don't want to use a cone. So I'm going to select this and press X to delete it. Let's press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for an icosphere and let's drop the icosphere inside this frame and then we need to replace it. So we need it to use the wireframe and also the join geometry with the set material. So I'm going to plug the mesh up to the geometry and the mesh up to the geometry and then we can't see it. That's because we haven't plugged it up to the final join geometry. So let's just click right here, bring our mouse down and we can go all the way down here and stick it into the final join geometry geometry so that we can see it. And if you navigate right over here, there it is. Now I'm going to move back up here to the icosphere and I want to subdivide it just once. 
So I'm going to change these subdivisions to two and now it has more geometry and it's more round. And because we already set up the wireframe and the join geometry and the set materials, it's already pretty much set up how we want. Um, I do want to change the location though. So let's do that. And then we also need to animate it. So I'm going to zoom out here just so that we can see that better. And then I want to bring it over to the other side. So on this sphere one on the transform, I want to bring it over on the X specifically. I'm going to go with a value of negative negative 2.2. So it's going to be right over there. You can just drag it over there to wherever you want. And then let's also bring it forward a bit more because I want to bring it a bit closer. So let's bring that over as well. And specifically, I'm going to go with like a negative 90. And then I'm also going to bring it up on the Z axis. Um, you could just have it kind of sitting on the ground, but I actually thought it would be pretty cool if these spheres were floating. So I'm going to make mine floating. So I'm just going to bring this up here. I'm going to change this maybe to just like a 0.7, something like that. So it's kind of floating there, kind of in the middle of where the camera is. And then with these cones, I'm actually going to be animating all of the rotation values and that way it's just going to randomly rotate around on all the axes and then I also want to make it just a little bit smaller so on the scale here I'm going to click drag down and then I can change all the values and I'll just change this to like a 0.4 so it's a bit smaller all right now before we animate this I just want to duplicate this one more time and create the other sphere so just press a a couple of times to make sure everything is deselected I can press b for the box select and I'm just going to box select all of the sphere one and I'll press shift d to duplicate let's drop it up here and then we need to plug it up to the final thing so I'll take the transform and geometry I'm going to drag out a wire and bring it all the way down here and plug it into the final join geometry that I can navigate right back up here and so we just need to change the transform to wherever we want so I'm gonna bring it back a bit and I'll bring it back to like a negative 70 on the Y and then on the X I'm going to bring that over right there and I'm actually gonna bring this one over to the other side so that they're kind of offset and specifically I'm gonna change this to like a 2.3 so it's way over there maybe just back a little bit actually to like a 2 that's better so I'll bring it over to a value of 2 on the X and then also on the Z, I will just bring it down a little bit so it's a bit lower. So I'll just bring that to like a zero. Yeah, a zero is pretty good. And then I do want to make this one a bit smaller. So on the scale here, I will click, drag down, maybe a bit smaller, like a 0.23. All right, that's better. So I'm just going to change it to a 0.23 on the scale there. Let's press Control S again to save the project. So we now have a sphere there and then another icosphere right up there. So we can now just animate these values. So let's go over to sphere one and we're going to animate these values. So I'll turn the all the rotations to zero. Just make sure you have all those rotations at zero. And then I'm going to go to frame one. So you can click right here. You can type in frame one and then enter and that's going to bring it over to frame one. So now what I want to do is hover my mouse over these values values and I'm going to press I and that is going to insert a keyframe and then again to make it a looping animation we need to go to frame 401 and it is very important that it's one frame after the ending of the animation so I'm going to change it to 401 and then I want to rotate all these values twice so I'm going to click drag down make sure you're on frame 401 when you do this and then I'm going to change all the values at the same time and I'm going to type in 360 and then I will type in the star and that's going to times it and I will type in two and then enter or you could also just type in 720 and so that's going to rotate the entire thing two times so I now need to add a keyframe here right on 401 so make sure you are on frame 401 and I'm going to press I with my mouse hovered over the rotation now if you select the transform you can see those keyframes but you can see that it kind of is slow and then it starts to speed up so again in the timeline make sure that the keyframes are selected by pressing the a key in the timeline and then I can press the T key and that is going to bring up the keyframe interpolation and just like before I want to choose the linear so now if I press the space bar to play you can see it's not going to slow down it's going to change at the same speed and you can see this is really laggy in the viewport if you want to preview this without it being so laggy you can hold down the shift and alt key and then just select the transform and now you can just preview the icosphere now there's going to be other icospheres and that is because of the array modifier but don't worry about that um, um, that's just because we don't have this other geometry here and so it's kind of squishing the array together but normally you're not going to see that squishing there and so now if you play this you can see that is looking really cool so this is what it looks like when you rotate all the values at the same time you can see sometimes it rotates this way sometimes it rotates that way and I do think that's really cool and you can see it is a looping animation because from frame 400 to frame 1 it looks exactly the same so I want to do the same exact thing for sphere 1 and actually we need to click 
click on the sphere one right up here and I'll hit end to open up the side panel and we need to rename this to sphere two because this is sphere two and this one is sphere one. So I'll press end to close the side panel. So just like we did before, right over here, we animated the cones and then we duplicated the animation. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. So I'm going to click on sphere one. I'm going to click on the transform and then double tap the A key in the timeline to make sure those are selected. And to copy them, you can press control C. So that'll copy those values. I'm now going to go right up here to sphere two and I'm going to select the transform and I want to change right here. I want to change this to frame one so that we're at frame one. And then all of these rotation values, I want to turn them to zero. So just make sure those are all zero. So I can now press I with my mouse hovered over those values and that is going to add a keyframe. And now that we have a keyframe in those values, those values are considered an animated value. So now I can paste those keyframes in there. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the timeline, make sure the transform node is selected and I'm going to press control V and that is going to paste the keyframes. So now if you play through that, it's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is actually shift alt and select the transform. I can zoom in here and I can play this and there we go. And it is a looping animation. So that is really cool. I'm going to zoom back out here and then I can shift alt and select the final join geometry. Let's press control S again to save. All right, so we are almost done with the animation. We still need to actually animate the entire object moving, and then that's gonna make it look like the camera is flying through the scene. Um, but before I do that, I want to change the sky because right now, if you hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view, you can see the sky is quite boring. It's just gray, and so let's change the sky. So to change the sky, we need to use the shader nodes. So I can just click right here and drag down, and we're gonna flip those windows. So I'm gonna bring this down, and so now you can just see, see the shader shader nodes. Now I don't want to edit the shader nodes. I actually want to edit the world nodes. So you can actually click right here on object and then you can instead change it to world. So we can now edit the world nodes. Now right now we just have a background and the background is set to gray and that's pretty boring. So I want to make it look like it's evening with some stars and then I also want to add some cool like planet or sun in the background. So first let's make it look kind of blue and kind of make it look like an evening. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a sky texture. Let's click on the sky texture and drop it down here. And then I wanna take the color and put that into the background so we can actually preview it. Now this type of sky doesn't work in Blender Eevee. So I'm going to instead change it to the Hosek Wiki, if that's how you pronounce it. But we're gonna change it to this one here. So if you now look around, you can see we have this nice blue sky and that's looking really cool. Now I wanna make it more contrasty and also I wanna make it darker, so I'm gonna press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for the RGB curves and let's drop the RGB curves right here. So I can now drag some tabs. I can click and drag and that's going to make some dots and that is going to change the curve. So I want to make it very contrasty. So if I make this more of a curve here, it's going to be very contrasty. So I'm going to drag a dot down here and then drag another dot right up there. And if for some reason you accidentally added in another dot that you don't want, you can select the dot and then you can click on the X button right there and that's going to get rid of it. So I'm just going to make it something like that so it's much more contrasty and dark. And I think I will actually bring these up just a little bit so it's even more contrasty. Let's press zero on the numpad and that is what I want. So I want it to look pretty blue. And I do want it to just be a bit more blue. So I'm actually going to click on the B here and that is going to go to the blue values and then I can just click and add a single dot and I'm going to bring it up and that is going to make it much more blue. Um, but something like that. You can go back over here to the C as well and you can play around with this if you want to. So something like that is pretty good. You can change that to your liking. All right, so that's pretty good for the base sky. Now I want to add two more things. I want to add some stars, and then I also want to add like some cool sci-fi sun or planet. So let's do these stars first. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's click on the Voronoi, and I'm going to drop it right down here. And then to preview the Voronoi, I can hold down the Control and Shift key and then select the node. And you can see that the Voronoi is going to add all these little dots. Now I want to change the scale because I want to make the dots a lot bigger. And I'm actually going to change the scale to a 175. So that way there's going to be a bunch of little stars. Now the stars aren't very contrasty, so I want to make them more contrasty. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And let's just drop the color ramp right in here. Now I can bring these values together. And as I start to smash these values together, you can see it's more contrasty. Now most of the sky needs to be dark and I just want some little white stars. So I'm actually going to switch these two values and I'm going to bring the white way over here 
and then I'm going to bring the black way over and just make those stars very small because stars really are quite small when you're looking at them from the ground looking at them up in the sky they are very small and also they are going to be glowing a little bit because of the bloom so I do want to make them pretty small so something like that so I now want to mix these together into the background so I actually need to create a new background so I'm going to click on this background right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it right here and then I need to join these two backgrounds together so I'm going to first bring these two nodes over so we have a bit more space and to join these two backgrounds together I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix and let's add the mix shader so we're going to bring the mix shader right here and then I can plug this background into this one here and then I can plug this background into this one here so now what I want to do is actually make the star background in this one and this one is going to be the sky so I can take the color and I want to put that into the color here of this background now right now it's just going to evenly blend between them so if you control shift and select the mix shader so if I drag back and forth the factor now you can see if the factor is all the way to one it's going to be blue and if the factor is all the way to zero it's going to be the stars so I actually want to have both of them so I only want to be able to see the stars where the stars are so what we can do is we can actually just take the color ramp and we can put that into the factor of this mix shader so just like that and then you can see that it's not really working if I zoom in here you can see that the stars actually look a little bit blue in the center and then there's black so what I can do is actually flip these so I'm just going to take this one and put this mix shader on the bottom one and then have this one be on the top one so now you can see there's the stars and then behind the stars there's the blue sky now I want to make the stars much more bright so I can turn up the strength value to make it much more bright and I actually want to make the stars really really bright so I'm going to change the strength value to like a 150 and because we have that bloom turned on you can see because they're so bright the bigger stars are actually kind of glowing and that's looking really cool so now we have a nice star texture and that is looking really cool and also if you want to change this right here on the color ramp you can change the size of those stars so you can make them really big if you want but that looks really weird I'm just gonna make them pretty small but if you zoom in here you can kind of see how much they're glowing so that is looking really cool so just press Control s again to save and there's just one more element that I want to add in the world I want to add a cool Sun or some kind of sci-fi planet now you could make it a Sun if you want to um, but I'm gonna be making it a planet you can do whatever you want and of course you can change it to whatever color you want so to make this I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna go to the search here and I'm going to search for a texture coordinate texture coordinate there we go so drop the texture coordinate right up here and and then what I can do is hold down the shift and control key and then select the texture coordinate and that is going to preview it so just hold down the shift and control key and then just keep on selecting the texture coordinate keep on clicking on it and it's going to go all the way down and I want to select the object one so we can preview the object texture coordinate so what I can do now to make this a circle is I can just add a color ramp and we can crush the values so what I'm going to do is press shift a and I'm going to go to the search here and search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right here and now if I drop the color ramp in there it's basically converting it to color data so now if I kind of look around here in the 3d space you can see that there's basically a gradient it's a really big gradient so if I now start to crush these values together you can see it's turning into a circle and then I don't want it to be smooth so what I'm gonna do is click right here on linear and I'm instead going to change it to constant and so now that it's set to constant I actually want to drag the black tab over here and then I'm going to take the white tab and drag it over and now you can see we have this little Sun or planet so that is really cool and we can change the size later but for now I'm just gonna make it about that big now if I press zero to go into the camera view you can see it's actually not at the right spot it's like way up here so what I can do is actually add a mapping node in here kind of like a transform node it's the mapping node and that's going to change where the texture coordinate is placed so I'm gonna press shift a and let's go to the search here and I'm gonna search for the mapping node and I'm just going to drop this right here between the texture coordinate and the color ramp so I can now just play around with the rotation values and that's going to rotate our planet there so you can just play around with these values to get it where you want now with these kind of sci-fi futuristic abstract scenes um, I have often seen that there's like a Sun right there and it looks like you're going into the sunset so if you want to you could do that 
and then right over here you could kind of make that smaller so you could make it look like a sunset what i want to do is i want to make it look like a planet and put it right over here kind of on the side so it's kind of over these mountains you can of course do whatever you want but i'm going to bring it over and also bring it up a little bit and then i'm also going to make it smaller by dragging right here so i can drag the white tab farther away and that's going to make it smaller so I'm just gonna make it pretty small, something like that, that's pretty good. And then I need to bring it up, so on the Z value, I can just kind of rotate that up just like that. And that is still a bit too big. So what I can do on the position is I can click right here and actually manually change the position number, because if I try to drag this, you can see it's very, very sensitive. So it's actually hard to get the exact size that I want. So if I click on this position right here, I can just change this number. All right, so I'm gonna go with a position value of point five seven five nine and then right over here if you want to use the exact same values that i'm using on the rotation on this mapping on the x you can type in 70.4 and on the y you can type in 59.4 and the z you can type in 26.1 all right so i don't now just need to add these into the final shader so to do this i actually need to use another mix shader so i'm going to select the mix shader and i'll press shift d to duplicate it shift D to duplicate it and I'm just gonna drop it here and then I can hold down the control and shift key and select the mix shader to preview it. So I now want to take this mix shader and I'm going to put it into the top one. And then in the bottom one, I want to add another background. So I'm gonna click on this background right here, just the normal one with the strength of one. And I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm gonna drop it down here. And I'm gonna take this background and stick it into the bottom shader. And then right here, I'm gonna just turn the strength up a bit, just turn it up to maybe five for now. And then you can change this to whatever color you want. For now, I'm just gonna make it like a yellowy color. So this one is now the sun shader, but then this one is now the rest of the sky. So I need some sort of factor or mask to tell it where it's gonna be the sky and where it's gonna be the sun. So we already created that, we created this right here. So if I just take the color, I can put the color from this color ramp into the factor. So now you can see that where the sun is, it's gonna be this one, but then where the rest of the sky is, it's gonna be this one. Now you can change this to whatever color you want. You could make it like kind of a reddish or an orangish color color kind of make it look like a sunset I think that red also looks really cool like that lighting is really nice that looks really cool you could also make it green that looks really cool as well I want to make it look like some sort of sci-fi planet so I'm gonna make it this very light blue but of course you can change it to whatever you want and then on the strength here I'm gonna make this like a six so it's just a little bit brighter um, you could turn up the strength but if you turn it up too high it's gonna be kind of blown out so just change that to whatever you want and I also really like that you can kind of see the roughness there because we added that noise texture right there in the black material we have all that really cool roughness there that's looking really cool in the reflections let's just click right here and I'm gonna drag this back and we're gonna flip back to the geometry nodes all right so we are almost done with the scene now it's time to actually animate this object so we're not actually going to be animating the camera going forward. We are instead just going to move the object back. And I just find that's a bit easier to animate. Um, and it'll look like the camera is flying through the scene. So just make sure this object is selected. And then right here, we can go to a value of one. So we're going to go to frame one. So I now just want to add a keyframe on this object. So I'm going to press I in the 3D space. You can press I. And I is going to bring up the insert keyframe menu. And I just want to click on location because all we're going to be animating is the location value so you can just click on location and now you can see that on that object there is a keyframe right there so now what I need to do is move over to frame 401 so I'm going to click right here on this value right here I'm going to type in frame 401 because that is one value after the end because if we want it to be a looping animation we need to just move it one over and that way there won't be two keyframes which are exactly the same so now that we are on frame 401 make sure your mouse is hovered over in the 3d space and i'm going to press g to grab and that is going to grab the object and it is pretty laggy um, you could also just hold down the z button and go back into solid view that might be a bit better so press g to grab and then i'm going to press y and that is going to bring it over on the y-axis and then i want to type in a specific value and that way it'll be moved over by the exact correct value so that it can be looping so i'm going to type in negative 400 and why i'm typing in negative is so that it moves back instead of moves forward and to make sure you got that right you can see right up there in the corner 
you can see it says negative 400 and then hit enter. And you can see that it looks exactly the same because this is right there and the mountain looks the same. Now don't move anything. We need to add another keyframe right here to actually place it here. So make sure you're still on frame 401 and I'm going to press I and then I want to insert again another location. So now you can see if I zoom out here, there is a keyframe at frame one and then another keyframe at frame 401. And then if I play through this, you can see that again, it kind of slows down and then starts to speed up. So again, just make sure you have this object selected and in the timeline, just press the A key to make sure those keyframes are selected. Hover your mouse over the timeline and press T. And then again, we want to change it to linear and that way it will not speed up and slow down. It'll be at the same consistent speed throughout the whole animation. All right. So the last thing to do for the animation is to animate the camera because I want to have the camera kind of moving around and I also need to move it out of the way of the cube here because if we don't animate the camera, it's going to be going through the cube. So I'm going to have it go over to one side, the cube will pass by, then it will go over to the other side and then the cube will pass by and then it will go back into the center. So let's animate the camera. So I'll press control S to save and let's click right up here to select the camera. And then I'm just going to go to frame one. So click right here and you can type in frame one and hit enter and that's going to bring it over to frame one. And then just so that we can see what the final animation is kind of going to look like, if the camera is selected, you can click right over here on the object data properties. And I'm going to go right here to the viewport display. And then on the pass a par out, if that's how you pronounce it, pass a par out, I'm going to turn this value all the way to one. And that way you're not able to see anything that's outside of the camera. You can just see what's in the camera. And I'm also going to hold down the Z button and go up to the rendered view and let go just so that we can see that in the rendered view. All right, let's also make this a bit smaller because we don't really need this for now and I'll make this a bit smaller. All right, so I now want to animate the camera. So make sure you are at frame one and I want to add a keyframe right here in the center. So where exactly the camera is. So I'm going to press the I key and I want to insert a location, rotation and scale. So just insert the location, rotation and scale right there on the camera. Now, because I want this to be a looping animation, I want to duplicate the keyframe over. And again, I want to put it at frame 401. And that way, when it gets to frame 401, it's going to go back to frame one and it'll be a looping animation. So just make sure the camera is selected and press the A key in the timeline to make sure that keyframe is selected. So I now want to duplicate this and bring it over. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and I'm going to bring this over and click to place that. And you can see there's an orange line there and the orange line means that there are two keyframes, but nothing changes in between the keyframes. So I'm going to zoom over here and I'm going to press G to grab and just make sure this is exactly at frame 401. Now, halfway through the animation, I want it to be at this exact point again. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is still selected and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate this again. And I'm going to stick this right here at frame 200. So just make sure it's at frame 200. You can zoom in there. So now we have a keyframe at frame one frame 200 and 401 and they're all exactly the same. So I'm now going to move over to frame 100 and at frame 100, I'm just going to click with my arrow keys and move over to frame 100 at frame 100. You can see that we're just like stuck inside the cube. So I want to move the camera over to the side. So make sure you're on frame 100 and I can press G to grab. Let's bring this over on the X axis and I'm just going to bring it over. We're going to bring it over there. Just bring it as far as you want. So I'm just kind of moving my mouse and bring that over on the X axis. Okay. And then I also want to rotate it. So it's looking more in the actual scene. So I'm going to press R to rotate, and then I'm going to hit Z and that's going to rotate it on the Z axis. And I'm just going to move my mouse and just kind of make it look more over that way. So I'm just going to bring it there and then click to place that there. Now, before you move anything, we need to add keyframes because if we don't add keyframes, it's going to jump back to the original keyframe. So on frame 100 right here, I'm going to hover my mouse in the 3D space and press I and we want to insert location, rotation and scale. All right. So now if you play through the animation, it starts out right here. And then as we go over to frame 100, it moves over to the side and you can see the cube passing by us. And then from frame 100 to 200, it's going to move back into the center. So now I want to go over to frame 300 and I want to bring it over to this side. So over on the left side. So I'm going to bring my timeline over, go to free frame 300. You can also just click right here and type in 300. Now on frame 300, I want it to be over on the other side and I want it to be exactly over by the other side. So what I 
can do is press A in the timeline to make sure everything is deselected. And I'm now going to press B for the box select. And I'm just going to box select this value right here on frame 100. And then I want to duplicate this and bring it over to frame 300. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to click and drag and bring it all the way over to exactly frame 300 and you can also zoom in and then press G to grab and stick it right over here. Now it's over on this side but instead of it being on the right side I want to bring it over to the left side. So to do this we can actually just make the values negative. So to do that I'm going to press the N key and the N key is going to bring up the side panel right here. And then I want to click right over here on item. And over here on item, we now have the transform values of the camera. So you can see right here, we brought it over on the X axis, and then we also rotated it and we rotated it on the Z axis. So I want to change this value to a negative value and change the Z rotation to a negative value. So make sure you're still on frame 300. I'm going to click on the location X, just click right there. And I want it to be the exact same value, but then I'm going to click right here and I'm going to add a negative and then hit enter. So now instead of it being over on the right side by 3.5, I'm going to bring it over on the left side by 3.5. All right, so that's good. I'm also going to change the rotation. So instead of it being rotated over by 12, it's going to be rotated by negative 12. So you can click right here and then keep the same exact value, but you can just click right there at the starting. And I'm going to type in negative and enter. So now you can see that it's the exact same, but it's on the other side. So we're basically mirroring the animation over to the other side. Now we need to add keyframes right here because right now we haven't actually overrided the keyframes. So what you need to do is hover your mouse over this value and press I. That's going to replace the keyframe. Hover your mouse over this value and press I and that will replace it. So now if you play through this, let's just play through that. You can see we can go over to frame one and it moves over to frame 100 and it's on the right side. Then it goes to 200 and it's back in the center and then it goes over to 300 and it's over on the left side. Now to be able to see this a little bit better, it is kind of laggy. So what I'm gonna do is press seven on the numpad and that is going to take me to the top view. And then I'm gonna just kind of bring this over here so I can see this a bit better. I'm also going to press N to close the side panel. And you don't have to follow along with this if you don't want to, but I'm just gonna show you. So I'm gonna hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. And I'm just gonna select the geometry nodes and then I'm going to zoom in here. And just so that it's not very laggy, I'm just going to unplug the final join geometry with the group output. So that way we can't see it. And then on top view, I'm just going to zoom into the camera. If I select the camera, you can see it moves over. And at frame 100, it's over on the right side. Then it goes back to frame 200 and it's back in the center. And then at frame 300, it's exactly over on the left side. And then it moves back over to the center. Now there is one more thing that I want to do to the camera animation. You can see as it gets to frame 400, it kind of stands still. And then back at the starting, it's still again. But instead of that, I want it to just seamlessly move in between 100 and 300 and then back over to 100. So when it gets to 400 and then goes back to one, I don't want it to stop moving. So this is actually really easy to fix. What we can do is we can add keyframes right over here and right over here. So what I'm going to do is press A to deselect everything in the timeline, and I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to drag a box around this frame right here, this keyframe on frame 300. So I can now press Shift D, and Shift D will duplicate it, and I'm going to bring it all the way over, and I'm going to bring it over to negative 100. So we're going to zoom in here and press G to grab and bring it exactly over to negative 100. And then right over here at frame 400, I want it to continue to move to 500. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything in the timeline. I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to drag a box around frame 100. So just select that keyframe. I'll now press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to bring this all the way over to frame 500. And you can zoom in there and get it correct. So just press G to grab and bring it right there to frame 500. So now it's going to continue to move. You can see it's going to continue to move, but because it ends at frame 400, it's going to hop back to frame 100. So I'm going to press the space bar to play, take a look at the camera, you can see it's moving 
and it doesn't stop and it just continues to move over. Now, if you didn't want it to do that, you could just delete these two keyframes, the frame at negative 100 and 500, but I do like this. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna keep that. So I'll press Control S again to save. And then what we need to do is zoom out here. And then I need to be able to see the geometry nodes again. Um, and I can't really select it because we can't actually see it. So I'm actually just gonna click right here on these tabs and go to the modeling tab. And then what I can do right up here, we close the outliner, but we have it over here in the modeling tab. So I'm just gonna make sure to select that original cube. And then I can go back over here to the layout. So now that we've selected that object, it is invisible right now, but we can just go back to the geometry nodes and I can just plug the geometry back up so that we can preview that. So we are almost ready to render the final thing. There are just a few more things that I wanna do. So I'm gonna click right here to select the camera. And if I zoom in here, you can see if I zoom way into the mountains very far away, it kind of looks glitchy. And in the final animation, you will be able to see those glitches and it will kind of be flickering. So I found a really easy way to fix this. So so if you select the camera, just make sure the camera is selected and go right over here to the object data properties. Why this is happening is because this clip start right here on the camera settings on the lens, the clip start is too small. So I'm gonna click on the clip start and I'm gonna change this to a value of two and enter. And now that I've changed that to a value of two, you really aren't able to see those glitches, maybe super far away. Um, and if you zoom out here, if you change the clip start too big, it's actually going to remove what the camera can see. So it's gonna remove things that are close up. So I don't wanna make it too big. So just don't turn this up value up too big, but I'm just gonna change the clip start to a value of two. And now if you zoom in there, you can see that it's much harder to see those glitches, maybe far away, there's just a few of them but at that point it's going to be so small you're barely going to be able to see that now also during the animation we do have motion blur and i do really like motion blur but i think the motion blur is turned a little bit too high um, when i did this before i actually wanted to turn the motion blur down just because i think it was a little bit too high so what i'm going to do to change that is to go right over here on the render properties and i'm just going to make these tabs smaller and i'm going to open up the motion blur tab so right now the shutter speed is a 0.5 but i think that that motion Motion blur is a little bit too strong so I'm going to change the shutter to just like a 0.2 instead and that way there's not going to be quite as much of that blur you can't see it in the viewport but when we render it you'll be able to see the motion blur and I just felt like the motion blur was a little bit too crazy so I'm going to turn that down all right and then the last render setting that I want to do is add a little bit of a depth of field and that way generally things here are going to be focused but then something down here which is really close up is going to be a little bit blurred and things far away will be a bit blurred so to add the depth the field let's click right back over here on the object data properties on the camera so make sure you have the camera selected and I'm going to open up the depth of field so right there click on the depth of field and open it up so let's first take the f stop and I'm going to turn that way down and now you can see that it is super super blurred so now you can change the focus distance and when you change the focus distance you can see what is going to be in focus so I'm going to bring the focus distance out. I'm gonna bring it a bit farther. And I like a focus distance value of 40. So I'm gonna change it to a value of 40. So you can see that it's gonna focus on things which are about that far away because that is in focus, but then this is kind of blurred and this is kind of blurred. Now that is of course way too big. So we can now just kind of dial back the f-stop. So let's turn the f-stop up and that's gonna make things more focused. So you can change the f-stop to whatever you want. If you just wanna have a very small depth of field, you could turn that up to a bigger value or if you like the stronger depth of field you could turn it up to just maybe like a 0.4 or something on the f-stop value I am going to change it to a 1.5 and that way you can see that kind of things that are closed up are a little bit blurred those kind of things are a little bit blurred and also if I kind of move over here in the animation you can see as these start to get close they're a bit blurred but then generally most things are in focus although the background is a little bit blurred and I do like how that looks so we can now render out the frames to images and then we'll just use Blender's video editor to compile the frames together. So let's click right over here on the output properties and then right down here on the output, I'm going to set an output to save the rendered frames. So I'm gonna click on this file icon right here. And then in this folder with my other tutorial files, I'm going to click on the plus here to make a new folder and I can just call this frames. So I'm gonna rename that to frames. I'm gonna double click on that to go inside the folder and then I can click on accept. Now you can render these out to PNG images if you want to, 
but I want to just make the file size a bit smaller so they're easier to work with. So on the file format, I'm going to change it to instead JPEG. So I'm going to change it to JPEG and then I will turn the quality up to 100 so it's the highest quality. So just press Control S again to save your Blender project and then I'm going to press Control F12 or you can also click on render and render animation and we're going to render out the animation. All right, and I'm back. So the render finished. So I'm just going to press Control S again to save and then let's compile the frames. So I'm going to click on file and I'm going to open up a new and I'm going to open up a new video editing and it's going to add the video editing layout. And then I don't really want the file browser. So I'm just going to click right here on the crosshair appears, hold my mouse down, just click and drag over and then drag back and let go. And you could do this with some other video editing software. I'm going to be using Blender though, because it's a Blender tutorial and I use Blender for all my video editing. So right down here in the timeline, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go here to image slash sequence. And then what you're going to do is just locate to the folder where you saved all the frames. And I'm going to press A to select all the frames. Now, before you add them, we need to actually click right here. And I want to click on reverse sorting because right here you can see that it says 400. And so it's going to be playing backwards. So just click right here, click on reverse sorting. And that's the way it's going to start at frame one and click on add image strip. All right. And then also I rendered it out as a 2K resolution image um, in Blender. I just had it set to 2K. So what I'm going to do is click on this video strip and I'll click on strip and then I'm going to click on set render size. And then you can see I render these out as a 2K image. So just set this to whatever resolution you used when you rendered out the images. All right. Now I also want to bring out the timeline. So I'm going to bring the end frame out and that is going to make that longer. And then I want this to loop. So I'm just going to select this right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it right here. So I can now press the space bar to play and check that out. So I can just bring this down and kind of zoom in there and that is looking really cool. And then if we bring this over, you can kind of click right here to bring the blue line over there and you can see it is a perfectly seamless looping animation because the very last frame was just one frame behind the very first frame. And so it's looping exactly. So you can now just take these and you can press shift D to duplicate and shift D to duplicate and just bring them over and you can loop it as many times as you want. Um, for this, I'm just going to have it loop like three times. So I'm just going to click and drag and bring the end frame out and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to click right here and just bring my blue line right here. And you can see that is 1,200 frames. So there we go. 1,200. So now if you play through this, you can see that the end of the video We'll go back to the starting of the video and that's going to be a looping animation as well. And then of course, if you want to, you can add some cool synth wave or techie music. I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial, but you could totally add in some music or sound effects or whatever you want to do. Let's just now export this to a final video. So I first need to go right down here um, on the output properties and let's click right here to set an output. And I'm going to save this as final video in the folder with my other files and I will just click on accept. And then I'm going to scroll down right here and I'll just show you the settings. So I like to use a file format of FFmpeg video. That's going to make it a video file. And then I like to use a container of MPEG4. And on the video, I use a video codec of H.264. And I have the output quality, medium quality, and the encoding speed good. And then if you have any audio, like any music or sound effects or anything, I use the audio codec of AAC. So those are the settings I found to work best. And then if you want to save this video editing file, let's just do that. So I'm going to click on file and save as. And I'm just going to save this as video edit.blend and I will click on save as. So I can now just press control S again to save and then you can click on render and you can render the final animation. And there we have it. So that is the final result. So if you followed along with the entire tutorial, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you were able to create something really cool. And if you'd like to purchase the tutorial files and also help to support me and this channel, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my patrons over on my Patreon page also have access to the tutorial files. So links will be in the description. And another great way to help support the channel is by checking out the YouTube memberships. So if you click on that join button down there next to the subscribe button, if you join my memberships, then you'll be helping to support the channel each month. And you'll also get some cool perks on YouTube. And I'd also love to see your results. So if you follow along with the tutorial and you'd like to share your result with me, you can let me know in the comments. Let me know where I can find your result online. You could post it on YouTube or just let me know in the comments and I'd love to see what you guys create. So I'll wrap it up here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.